Now we should have a better idea of how to draw out the background. So now we're going to spend a bit of time on the entity model side of stage building. In order to work on enemy and boss placement, we need to look at the relationship between the models and the levels. Let's look at lines 43 through 78. Here it talks about the spawn command and the format of how to use it. There is the spawn command itself and subcommands that are grouped with that particular spawn. Each subcommand assigns additional attributes to that one spawn. There are multiple subcommands listed under the spawn command, but we're only going to focus on the required subcommands and also some of the optional ones. The required subcommands are coords and at. As understanding how these work requires a quick dive into computer screen science 101, but it won't be that hard. You got this. The optional subcommands we will go over are alias, health, item, and boss. All right, so let's start with spawn. Also, if you want to look on your own as well, you can always find an occurrence like at line 86, for example, and look at the help area. Spawn is the command that takes one of the models that have been declared in models.txt and loads it into the current level. So do you remember the format for creating game modes? How we had the group other commands with the set command? The same principle with Spawn. Spawn has two parameters, but only one is required. The first one. There's a second, but we won't go over this for now. Its first parameter is a reference to the name of a model that's been declared in models.txt. Better yet, it refers to the name of the model that was given in the model's file. For instance, if we go back to our enemy model list, let's open up Shermy. As you can see, the name declared for this model is Shermy. So when spawning these models, you want to refer to these name values. This isn't case sensitive either. So that means you don't have to worry about capitalizing anything if you don't want to. You just have to make sure the spelling matches. So back to the level file. We see at line 86 that this particular spawn is referring to Shermy. Let's go back up to line 46 to discuss alias. Alias allows you to change what name is displayed on your screen when the player interacts with that model. Let's say we wanted to name that model Jessica. Then you would use the following subcommand, alias space Jessica, which would make the spawn code look like this. Spawn Shermy alias Jessica. Remember, if you wanted to use spaces, they are represented by underscores. You should remember that from the game modes video. Next is health. If we went back to look at the Shermy model, there's a health given a 50 for this particular model. But you can overwrite that value in this spawn and give them its own health. So if you wanted to make them strong or weak, you can set that here. Let's say that we want to give Jessica a health of 20. We can do that by health space 20, which would make the spawn code look like spawn Jeremy alias Jessica health 20. So item is a command that tells the spawned object to drop an item once defeated. You can use this subcommand on enemy, boss, and obstacle types. We've looked at an item model type before named apple. Let's say that we wanted Jessica to drop an apple after she was defeated. We use item space apple, which would make the spawn code look like spawn Shermy alias Jessica health 20 item apple. Next is the boss subcommand. This dictates whether spawn is a boss for the level or not. When this subcommand is turned on by using the value one, that means that first the music will change to that boss music that was set on line two and the level will end automatically once the model is defeated. So let's say I wanted Jessica to be the boss of the level. All right, so boss with the level of one. So if we change that code, it would look like spawn Shermy alias Jessica health 20 item apple boss one. One thing to keep in mind, because this setting ends the level after the model is defeated, 
then that means the player wouldn't have enough time to get that item that was dropped. But there are ways around fixing this that will be covered in the community and advanced course. We've talked about how we want the model to be spawned, but we haven't talked about where we want it placed. That's what coords and at are for. Before we go into those, let's discuss how a computer screen works, as understanding this is key. We won't go into too much detail, but only enough to understand the relationships. So the current windowed video mode and camera of this game is set to 320 by 240, which means 320 pixels wide and 240 pixels high. What is a pixel you might ask? Some of you might already know what it is, but if you don't, let's go over this. A pixel, which stands for picture element, is a small dot that when grouped together with other dots or pixels, make up the display for a computer or even flat screen TV monitors. Let's talk about a typical 1080p HD TV. Without going into too much detail, the resolution for the TV is 1920 by 1080 or 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels high. This is because the type of pixel ratio used in HD, which helps you determine the resolution based on that ratio. This also means that this screen has 1080 rows of pixels that each have 1920 pixels in them. So if we were to tally the number of available pixels in this screen, it would be like 920 times 1080, which gives you 2,073,600 pixels. This is why things look clearer on these size TVs as you have access to more pixels to display elements inside of it. So when it comes to the video mode of 320 by 240, that means it fills up 240 rows of pixels that contain 320 pixels. This gives you a total of 76,800 pixels. So this can definitely fit in a 1080p HD monitor. Again, I know that was a lot of math. Uh, what matters about this is because we need to be able to calculate the locations of pixels. If you are familiar with algebra, you know that with graphing, Finding a positive X and Y means that you move to the right then up and your zero or beginning point is in the middle. But with calculating coordinates on a computer screen, the zero point is at the top left of the screen. So anything negative won't even show up on the screen. A positive X and Y point means that you move to the right and down instead of up. So the higher the X coordinate, the farther down you go. All right, so make sure to keep this in mind. OK, so back to the 320 by 240 camera. Let's look at one of the panels and look at the size of the image or sprite. The dimensions are 120 by 244 for all pixels of this stage. So that means it takes up 120 width of the camera and fills up the height as it's larger than 240. In our last lesson, we went over drawing out the panels in a level. So for instance, if we use the order command to place 20 of these panels in a certain order, 120 times 20 pixels wide, that number comes to 2400, far larger than the 320 pixel window we have. So that means we can only show 320 pixels at a time. And that camera scrolls across the size of the level. So there are two numbers we need to understand and remember the size of the camera, which is set based on the video mode. More on the different video modes can be found in the manual, but we'll go over this more in the intermediate course. The second is the X coordinate of where the camera is overlaying on the level size. So using the above 2400 size level as an example, the middle of the level is at 1200 pixels as I just divided 2400 by two. We can position our camera to where the left of it is at the 1200 mark or a little before so that the 1200 mark is in the middle of the camera. The middle of the camera is 160 pixels. So if you want it to show the middle of the level 
in the middle of the camera, then you would take 1200 and subtract by 160, which equals 1040. So if the left side of the camera sat at 1040, then the middle of the level would be at 160 levels into the camera, directly in the middle. I know this is a lot, but once we put this into practice, it'll become much easier. Don't worry about it. So let's talk about the coordinate subcommand. The coordinate subcommand parameters are the X and Y coordinates of the camera itself. Remember, the zero starts at the top left of the camera rectangle. And your rectangle, in this case, is 320 by 240. You can use negative and positive numbers. You can choose to spawn them off camera or on camera. So let's say we wanted to have the spawn happen off camera and they walked from the middle right. You would use the following. Coords 380 space 200, which means the spawn will happen 60 pixels, which is 380 minus 320 to the right of the camera, which would look like Spawn Shermie, alias Jessica, Health 20, Item Apple, Boss 1, Chords 380, 200. Again, more on this when we start to put this into practice. The last subcommand is at. At is a subcommand with a parameter that refers to the X value of where the left of the camera is located. So at the start of the level, the left of the camera starts at zero. But as the camera scrolls to the right, the pixel number of where the left side of the camera is on increases. So that means that once the camera reaches the specified point of the level, then spawn will happen based on the coordinates of the camera itself. So I know I've been going over a lot of technical jargon. Let's put this into practice so we can see how to find these values and such. All right, so let's look at the example at line 86. As you can see, there's a spawn of Shermie at pixel 10 of the background, where that particular Shermie is at the coordinates of the camera at 350 by 160. Remember that the camera size is 320 pixels wide and 240 pixels high. So that means that the spawn will be placed 30 pixels to the right of the camera. Remember, 350 minus 320 is 30, also at 160 pixels high or down. We will now see these values by hovering over the design area. There are X positions and Y positions shown at the bottom left of the window. And this value corresponds to where your mouse is located on the design. Let's start by finding the background X position of 10 pixels. This is the value of your at subcommand. So at this point, the camera would be 320 pixels more to the right, like so. But the X coordinate of Shermie is a value of 350, which is 30 pixels more than the camera. Also, another thing to realize is that at plus the X coordinate is going to be the X value of where the spawn will happen on the background design. So in this case, the at position of 10 plus 350 is going to be 360. So that means that the X value of the spawn will be placed at 360. So let's test out this theory. So hover with your mouse down in the design area. OK, so let's 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 go back to the background. Let's hover with your mouse over to the X position of 360. When you do that, you'll end up appearing at the center of the sprite. Now let's look at the Y value coordinate, which is 160. So let's find that pixel that's located at the X coordinate of 360 and Y coordinate of 160. All right, when you find that, as you can see, the point is at the bottom center of the sprite. It's going to happen like this every time. So two things to remember when building out a stage. Number one, the placement in reference to the stage or background. And number two, the placement in reference to the camera. And again, man, I know, I know I, I went over quite a bit. So you may need to watch this more than one time to get the hang of it. And please ensure that you're taking notes. You're definitely gonna need notes. 
especially for this part. There's also a cheat sheet in the community that helps with this as well. You can find the link to it in the lesson. All right, so once you're ready, we'll go to the next lesson to discuss grouping and waiting. See you soon. We hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just wanted to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin. Appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.